Uh, looks like I've got some time to kill before the next train gets here. I'll do a little work on my portable computer. Where is my portable computer? Here is my portable computer. It looks like just one of those organizers, but in fact it is a computer. This is the Scion 3. It just won first prize at Comdex as the best new international product. It's got a full feature database program in there, a Microsoft Word compatible word processor. It even has its own built-in object-oriented programming language for developing custom applications. It's rather obvious that the world of portable computing is changing very quickly. Today, we'll take a look at the newest in notebooks, laptops, and palm-top computers on this edition of Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Datastorm Technologies, setting the standard in PC communications through the development of award-winning software such as Procom Plus, combining power, ease of use, and affordability to become the best-selling communication software in the world. And by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And by Cardinal Technologies, designer and manufacturer of advanced personal computer systems and communications peripherals, as well as multimedia and graphics products. Cardinal Technologies, where computer products are designed and manufactured in the USA. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. This is not quite a general purpose palm top computer, but it's an extraordinary piece of technology. This is the new Discman from Sony. I call it the Readman, following the Walkman and the Watchman. It is an electronic book. These are the actual books over here, a little three inch CD-ROM. This CD-ROM can have as much as 150 full text books on it, all the reading you'd ever want to do for the rest of your life. Let me show you how this thing works. I put the little disc in there, and I can read the book just sort of linear fashion as if it were a printed book. Uh, go in here and just go through the, the normal menu mode and uh, call up the table of contents, take a look at the index, figure, it is, uh, figure out what movie it is I want to read about. But the beautiful thing, of course, about having an electronic database here, not just a book, is that I can do a keyword search. Suppose I don't know what movie I want to look for. Well, I know there was a character named Alvy uh, something or other in there, so I'll just put in the keyword Alvy and say, do you have any movies in here that have to do with a character named Alvy? It searches the entire CD-ROM, says Annie Hall is your movie. Of course, Annie Hall is the movie. Full text here. I'm flipping through pages at a time. You can flip through a line at a time. Quite extraordinary. Now, this little Sony Reed Man, as I call it, comes bundled with a 26-volume Compton's Encyclopedia and a couple other books, so it's rather nice to know that this little guy not only does text, but it can also even do graphics. By the way, it's also an audio CD player if you get tired of reading your books. Today, we're going to take a look at the newest portable computing technology with the best of the new portables just shown at the recent Comdex. Now, we may think of laptop computers as a nice way to do some desktop work while we're on the road, but sometimes portable computing takes on a much more serious purpose. The Oakland Hills fire last October burned over a several square mile area. It was impossible to see what was burning, even from the air, due to the heavy smoke. For firefighters, that meant having to depend on some other means of knowing what was burning and where it was located. The answer was this Pathfinder Professional, a hardware software package from Trimble Navigation, which uses satellite signals to mark its location and bring up area maps from its topographic memory. What Trimble Navigation uses is a system called Global Positioning Systems, which is a way to position ourselves on this Earth from an arrangement of satellites that are orbiting the Earth. So with that, we can get very precise measurements, uh, as little as a centimeter accuracy, and in this case, about 10 meter accuracy. The technology Trimble supplied to us allowed us to get a map very early in the fire, a very accurate map of the fire perimeter very early in the firefighting effort. Um, and uh, allowed us to see, uh, see what was burning, what, uh, how our forces should be uh, uh, used uh, to the best advantage. Even after the fire was over, the portable pathfinder helped fire inspectors locate the sites where houses used to be. With street signs and mailboxes burned down, computer mapping was the only way to identify structural remains. The maps generated by the portable pathfinder will be used by cleanup and repair crews in the months ahead, as this Oakland Hills neighborhood tries to rebuild. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
There's no question about what is the newest wrinkle in portable computing out with the keyboard and in with the pen. Here to show us two new pen-based portables are Kate Permel of Grid and Tracy Weatherby of Momenta. Let me ask you, first of all, Tracy, it seems backwards to me. I mean, when we invented the typewriter, that was a great improvement over having to write with a pen. And now we're saying, isn't this wonderful? We can write with a pen again. I mean, what's the big deal about pen input? Well, pen is actually good for a whole variety of things, only one of which is text entry. In fact, that's probably the thing it's worst at, which is why we've also given people a uh -huh. keyboard with our computer. But a pen is really good at selecting objects, drawing figures, um, taking cursive notes. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to realize that things don't have to be ASCII text to be valuable information. And the directness of actually writing on the surface that you're actually viewing on makes everything a lot easier yeah. than, for instance, with a mouse, where you're doing something sure, here sure. that happens here. All right, Kate, let's start with a, with a look at your grid and explain the configuration, because I see a little antenna coming out of this laptop here. Yes, this is a wireless product. We are communicating from the grid pad to a 386 PC okay, here. I might just show on the other piece of the network, here's your receive antenna. That's right. Okay. There's an antenna in there. It's a half-size AT card mm -hmm. that has the communication hardware in it. Okay. So what this is, is this is essentially a node off of the Novell network. This is a 386 network right. PC running Novell, and the grid pad is and now a no node wires, off of that. Right? Precisely. Okay. But it behaves just as though there yeah. were a wire connected where the antenna okay, is. Okay, now let's talk about the pen based part. How would you use this grid? Well, primarily the uses for the grid pad are in the area of data collection and forms replacement, where I'm walking around and doing a task that requires that I collect data on the spot, check from a list of boxes. So instead of the clipboard and the pen, Precisely. we're doing this. Precisely. Uh, the application that I have running here is an expense report. It's something I happen to use on airplanes when I'm coming uh -huh. home from business trips. And basically what this does is it enables me to fill out my expense report, and when I get back to the office... Maybe you can just hold it this way so we can all see it. Okay. Wirelessly connect to the server mm -hmm. and actually print out my expense well, show report. Show me how you do that. Okay, I've got my expense application running here. If I wanted to add a meal, I could simply indicate that this is so a you're breakfast. using the pen to pick icons Precisely. Off, right? There are lists of items that are, are all common things that actually exist on the expense mm -hmm. report I fill out by hand. And I can tell it it's my breakfast is at a cafe. So you're doing text entry. Exactly. And it's with grid. And then actually give it a dollar amount, $15. And when I'm ready, I can hit OK, and that adds that entry. And you get instant feedback from the machine Precisely. as it converts it into the text. And if, in fact, I choose to, I can double-click on any field and bring up a keyboard and enter with the keyboard rather than actually doing mm -hmm. the handwriting recognition. Or can you prove to me you're plugged into this network? Can you Absolutely. print on the network or That's something? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me go back to my menu. And at this point, I can simply choose to report this. I'll hit the expense report and it actually will send it, queries me to send it to a printer. Uh -huh. When I select printer, it's actually going out and attaching through the network here to the printer that's attached to my server. Okay, we'll come back in just a minute and see if it works. Tracy, let's turn to you now. As you mentioned, you have a keyboard also in the Momenta. I mean, this thing's been on the cover of every magazine now, so there must be something special about it. Explain why it comes with a keyboard, first of all. It comes with a keyboard because our target market is actually people who would buy a DOS or Windows notebook computer today. And we know that those people have gotten used to keyboards mm -hmm. aren't going to want to enter text. So this text is a sort of one box keyboards. does it all kind of That's approach. right. Okay. So if you're going to use it as a notebook computer, you'd use that keyboard. If you were going to, for instance, go into a meeting where the pen is a lot more appropriate and socially acceptable, I could very simply take, rid of, take away the keyboard and just use the pen. All right, show me how you would use the momentum now in the pen mode. Well, one thing that you do is you're certainly recognizing geometric objects. Mm -hmm. I'm in our presentation program right now. And what I can do is select any object, and if you touch on the middle, you get what we call the command compass. Mm -hmm. And this allows you to uh, get all kinds of commands right at the tip of your pen rather than having to memorize a whole lot of gestures. So I can very, very simply copy things, and I can remove in the same way, and then you can accelerate using the button on the pen. Mm -hmm. What I can also do is, of course, do text entry, as uh, uh, Kate was showing you as well. And then um, I'm customizing my presentation. I also want to add a new chart here. So I'm going to add a new page. There we go. And we have a paper tray here that allows me to take icons and scrapbook mm. art out of here. So I'm just going to take our icon, our uh, logo, and just copy it in. Then I'll go ahead and add in a chart. And one of the other things that's unique about the Momentus pen system, which lives right on top of DOS, is that it has basically embedded applications. So mm. something like this chart that I'm adding is really a whole charting application that I can just stick on anywhere I want to. So I can go in here and uh, make that as large as I want, move it around, 
edit it if I want. Yeah. And once again, we're using very simple tapping gestures to do that. So if I want a pie chart, I simply tap on that. If I want to put on legends and labels, I can do that very simply and then explode the Tracy, chart. Tracy, a couple of quick questions. Battery powered, of course. Of course. What kind of storage device in there? We've got a 40 megabyte hard drive uh -huh. in the standard product, four megs of RAM. Okay. And the batteries can be either AA alkalins or NICAD. Tracy, we can't let you go without one more question. I take it you can do cursive writing. There's character recognition in the Memento? Uh, no, you don't recognize those letters, but you can capture them just as you would in your own notebook. So instead of, for instance, having to type a memo response, uh -huh. I can jot down a few notes and fax Scribble a little notes on the margin and actually fax that version of it. Exactly. That's great. Okay, and did this work? Do we have hard copy it of that expense report? It certainly did. Okay, there really is a wireless network That's there. That's right. Thank you both very much. Handheld calculators evolved into palm top organizers, which then grew into palm top computers. But Hewlett Packard and Motorola have now combined to up the ante one more notch with a new add on for the HP 95LX palm top computer. The HP 95LX has been a popular handheld computer ever since its introduction, but now you can do even more with it thanks to this add on from Motorola called the New Stream. It's a wireless information retriever that interfaces with the HP Palm Top. They both fit into this caddy, and you can still carry it around in your jacket pocket. With the new stream, you can receive email, updated schedules, revised spreadsheets, even information from online databases, all without a phone or modem. The HP Palm Top has DOS 3.22 built in, and it comes with a full version of Lotus 123 in ROM. The 95LX is essentially a PCXT in your pocket. And for busy executives like showbiz attorney Peter Frank, the HP 95LX is the perfect solution for computing on the road without having to lug around a laptop. If you're recording a lot of data, you want to carry data around, you really want to have a DOS compatible machine. Uh, and this one was the first one that had full functionality, full DOS functionality that made sense to me. The little HP Palm Top weighs only 11 ounces yeah, and can run for more than a month on two AA batteries. For attorney Frank, it's perfect for taking down notes at a meeting or developing budgets, things you can't do with one of those little electronic organizers. When you're traveling, you get phone numbers and addresses and you just stick them in as you go and then you've got them there. It's the first trip I haven't just had millions of little pieces of paper coming out of all my pockets. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. As we've seen, besides pen-based input, the other major trend now is wireless connection between laptop and desktop. Here to show off two new cellular portable computers are Mark Marangella from NEC and Gary Doolittle from IBM. Now this does not look like a computer to me, Mark. What is in this briefcase you've got here? Well, totally integrated into this briefcase okay. is a uh, portable cellular phone manufactured by NEC, an interface device, and of course our notebook computer. This uh, package allows you to both transmit and receive data and transmit and receive facts. And I think uh, later on this morning we'll yeah. have a chance to show and the You call this uh, essentially the wireless workstation, right? That is correct because you are totally untethered. As yeah. you can see, there are no cables. Yeah. And you can, through the cellular uh, modem, th through the cellular connection, you can send and receive okay. uh, and this is all sort of pre-wired into this particular briefcase that's right? correct as you open up the package it's all configured ready to go okay, all the show, show us the computer the computer of course is an sx20 and what we have done is when you turn on the unit all the software comes on to allow you to transmit and receive over the cellular connection and so it's all hot loaded our goal at nec was to provide a totally integrated solution that would allow the customer to operate from their car, from the, from the road, without having to add any okay. other features Now to that's it. what I want to do. I've got my little ultralight with me and I want to send a fax to my office. Can I do it? That's correct. How you would can. you do it? Well basically as you can see in the menu feature... Now we've got a fax machine back here. This is a real That test. is correct. Okay. There's a fax machine behind yeah. us. We'll go into the... We'd initialize the modem and this modem contained in here has both data and fax capability. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is you can see from the screen under communications functions menu I'm going to go ahead and hit the send fax mode. Once you get in the send fax mode, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a file that I'm mm -hmm. going to be sending to you. I'll go into the Alt F. Everything is controlled right. by the Alt key. I identify a sample message I want to send to you. And that's what I have done. 
I'll get out of this. There's the sample message I'm uh -huh. going to be sending to you. I'll very quickly type uh, your number in. Okay. The one, the four, one. You continue sending the facts, okay? Yep. I want to turn it over to you now, Gary, and take a look at what you've got there, which is called PC radio. It's not even That's called right. a computer. What is that device? PC radio is a product for the mobile workforce, uh, such as sales representatives and service technicians who are out in their territories during the day, and it could be a very valuable tool if they had access to their employer's right, host what, data. What's in that box? In this box right here is a fully integrated uh, cellular telephone uh -huh. with modem. I see the handset. And integrated. And I've got one here too. And an integrated printer, 40 column printer, mm -hmm. along with a full screen display. All right, now I've got one here too, and can we sort of see if this thing really works as a Certainly. telephone? Again, no sure. wires, and I'm going to try to call you. I've got your number uh, on your computer over there. And I'm getting my dial tone right here, and let's see if this actually works. I'm going to try to call you here, uh, Gary. And of course, this is actually a toll call, so I've got a lot of numbers uh, to punch in here. And let's see actually if we can call from laptop to laptop. And my phone is ringing. Is your phone ringing? This phone's ringing. All right, let's see if this really works. Hello. Hello, Gary. This really does work. Hey, you sound great, Stuart. It's like when we were kids, we had these walkie talkies, but you could hear That's each right. other. Yeah, no, this really does work. Okay, I'm going to hang up. Okay. okay. Now, uh, this is great. So let's say we were colleagues. I'm in the field somewhere. I've actually called you from my PC radio to your PC right. radio, and I've told you, uh, check your email at the office or something. Could you do that now and get data through your PC radio? Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the great benefits of this. And okay. a six and a half pound package about the size of a good book, eight and a half by 11, as you can see there, about two and a half inches thick. Yeah, all right. Tell me what you would do. Uh, we would go to our phone book, which is uh, a list of phone numbers, and make a phone call just by pressing the number and the unit, PC radio, will go out and contact the cell site mm -hmm. and make a phone call. In this particular case, we're calling a number in the IBM Information Network, right. which is a nationwide network. And we contact the IBM Information Network, which is in uh, Tampa, Florida. And from there, we will go to Boca Raton, Florida, where my email is located. Okay, so I called you, computer to computer. You just called your base in Florida, computer right. to computer. Uh, we had voice transmission, you're having data transmission now, mm -hmm. and then what would you do next? Suppose uh, let's, you're getting that stuff down, I well, assume. Well, for, in for instance, when uh, uh, you get something up on the screen, okay. very often you want to print it. Okay. And the PC radio has a built-in printer. Yeah, a I know. I know someone has a little printer in there. Okay, show and me. Of course, you would not want to, let me get down here on the screen. Okay. You would not want to uh, try and remember everything, so you would print it off, and then you would have something for a permanent record, uh -huh. as you can see there, and, right, that's, and my that's, the that just that's my invitation to and represent. Sh shows you where to show up here. PC Chronicles. That's fantastic. Now let's turn back to you. How did we do with the fax thing? It's gone through. You sent you the, fax. the fax. If you here. can move your briefcase, yeah. uh, indeed, there's a fax sent just a couple of minutes ago to me here at Computer Chronicles. Uh, this stuff is amazing. How how far along are we? I mean, are these products right now, both of you? Well, in our case, uh, we've been, uh, two months ago, uh, NEC uh, launched the first, uh, this product, um, and it has been on the market. Okay. Yes, we're selling through our distribution network, uh, both uh, with the data and fax uh, uh, yeah. functions that have just been described. Yeah. Uh, on this particular unit also, on my menu, I can also receive a fax, sure. so I can actually close my briefcase up. If you can mm -hmm. imagine this, mm -hmm. as long as your portable phone is on. Right. You can walk down the street and you could be receiving faxes into your system yes, your while you're walking. Sticking out of your briefcase. Well, the, even the antenna can be closed yeah, as yeah, long as you have yeah. signal strength. Okay, real, real quickly, uh, what's the status of PC radio shipping? PC radio will be available later this year. Uh huh. And right now we're available for special bid situations with clients who have decided that they wish to have this for their field force. Terrific, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Well, in just a minute, we'll look at the new Macintosh PowerBook Portable and the first affordable color laptop. Don't go away. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That is the anthem of the computer industry. Here to show us the newest and much talked about Macintosh portable is Wayne Wesley from Apple. And also with us to show us a color notebook computer is Brett Berg of AST. Let's turn to the, note, the power books first, Wayne. And, and we all saw the Mac portable when it first came out a couple of years ago, and there were a couple of problems. It wasn't quite what everybody wanted it to be, mm -hmm. I guess. What were the problems you were addressing in the new power book series? First of all, we wanted to uh, make all these products notebook products, so get them down in size Smaller, and weight, right. and still contain or still um, have all products 
have the Macintosh advantage, mm -hmm. still run the system software, as well as having some of the networking and communication um, um, right. capabilities. And you got three versions of the PowerBook. Right. Huh? Right, we have the Macintosh Portable, uh, Macintosh PowerBook 100, mm -hmm. uh, the most affordable Macintosh PowerBook. It's also the lightest at 5.1 pounds. Okay, and affordable at what price? What's the bottom end? Uh, the, the bottom end is $22.99 okay. for the base configuration. Then here, the PowerBook 140, a little bit more performance than the PowerBook 100, has an internal floppy drive, mm -hmm. weighs 6.8 pounds. Okay. Base configuration is $28.99 for the price. Right. And this is the top of the line? And then the top of the line, the high performance Macintosh PowerBook 170, it also weighs 6.8 pounds, mm -hmm. has an internal uh, floppy drive, features a uh, active matrix display, which is the premier yeah. display technology available. In, in All right, it's got a kind of interesting layout here. Talk through the logic behind this design. Right, we spent a lot of time with uh, existing Macintosh portable customers as well as notebook buyers wanting to get a good ergonomic design. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we put the keyboard to the back of the unit, uh, placed the trackball here in the center, which left this area which we call a palm wrist. Uh -huh. So a user can come in, put their hands here or their palms here on this space and then type very comfortably. You'll notice that I'm typing here, this is a good ergonomic position, uh -huh. my wrist is straight. And when you go so. to use the trackball? Then I use the trackball, I can control it here with my, with my thumb, uh -huh. use the, uh, my other thumb to control the mouse button, or I can drop down here and use either my middle finger or my index finger mm -hmm. and then use this mount bu mouse button as well. So a lot of flexibility there. All right, what, what, what do you have on there? What can you show us in using this PowerBook? Great, book? so all of these um, PowerBooks run Macintosh system software 7.0, our uh -huh, latest version, right. so all the desktops, uh, all the applications you run on your desktop, you can run here as well. Um, I have, that I'll bring up here on the screen, a um, persuasion document, and again, I can just easily control um, and select text uh, quite easily with this PowerBook. Let me also, um, highlight another key advantage that we have and that's in the area of networking. Uh -huh. All three products have networking built in so what that does is allows me to access my desktop computer a file server or a printer quite easily and let me do that here. What I have is I have a standard phone cable connected from my PowerBook 100 to my PowerBook mm -hmm. 170 and so with this icon that I have I just double click type in the password and I'm using Macintosh file sharing, which is a standard part of mm -hmm. System 7.0. Here I have all the uh, contents of my PowerBook 100, the hard disk, available to me on the 170. Uh -huh. I could also use that with a right. Macintosh desktop computer, a DOS desktop mm -hmm. computer, a lot of capabilities there. And what's the price of the high end on the 170, Wayne? The price of the high end is uh, $45.99. Okay. Um, so we're also bundling AppleTalk Remote Access, which is, uh, gives you networking capabilities yeah. when you're on the road. All right, Brett, let's turn to you. Now, one thing we have haven't seen yet and every uh, notebook or laptop user would like is color on that screen and you finally have done that. Uh, what is your approach to color and sort of just show us, uh, give us a little run through of the machine here. Sure, well at AST Stuart uh, our goal was to bring a portable color notebook into the masses under $5,000 mm -hmm. and when I talk about notebook I'm talking about maintaining the 8.5 by 11 form okay. factor. It's only 2.3 inches thick also. Uh, this is color and it supports actually VGA color, which is 640 by 480 mm -hmm. graphics resolution with 16 simultaneous colors, as well as 320 by 200 resolution with 256 simultaneous colors. So it has the full range of colors. So support. I can run Windows in color on this machine? Absolutely. This is ideal for graphical user interfaces like Microsoft Windows, like IBM's Presentation Manager. Now, one of the compromises you made, I take it for price, was it's not active matrix display. Is that correct? That's right. What does that mean to the user? Well, this technology is using the, the latest technology in what's known as FSTN mm -hmm. uh, uh, color LCDs. FSTN stands for Film Compensated Super Twisted Pneumatic. Mm -hmm. And what it allows us to do is to provide color technology in the 8.5 by 11 form factor without significantly impacting the battery life of the machine. So we can actually achieve two and a half hours uh -huh. of battery life on this notebook. Even cranking out color in there. Absolutely. All right, now you've got your trackball side mounted, which is of course right. a problem for a mouse user and a portable. Show us how that works there. Well, what I've got attached is the Microsoft Ballpoint, uh, which is a pointing device, and it works very similar to a mouse uh, or a trackball in that I use the my thumb to move the cursor, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's buttons on the top and on the bottom to select the icons. Right now, that will, will that snap off? So when I'm when I'm 
carrying it, I can take that off? Right. Well, actually, you can close the case uh -huh. and not have it affect I see. the closure of the case in case you want to pull it. Or if I wanted to, to slip that into my briefcase, I could pull right. it. Right. Very see. simply, we just take it off and we unconnect the serial connection in the back. And, and if I'm left-handed, I could put it on the other side. Absolutely. Which you I can am. just flip okay. it around. All right. Can you, can you run through a little bit of Windows just to uh, see what this thing looks like in color? Sure. Well, I've got Microsoft Windows up, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to go into one of the applications under Windows, and I'm going to open up some graphic files that just really show off yeah, what the color yeah, machine can yeah. do. So we'll go in here, select an image of uh, the Beatles, and we'll just put it on the full screen. It really works. And it works. It's a color VGA It's computer. color VGA. And in fact, you can choose from over 240,000 uh -huh. colors. What's the status of these products, guys? Are these out now? We're shipping uh, in quantity as we speak. And where are we on this? We will be sending eval samples uh -huh. out in December, and we'll be in full volume production in January. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank what you. What a great show. That's our look at the latest in portable computing. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, two major announcements at Spring Comdex. IBM unveiled its new OS2 version 2.0 to generally favorable reviews. The new version of the IBM operating system includes a subset of Windows 3 and DOS so that you can run virtually any PC software under the new OS2. Meanwhile, in the battle of the giants, Microsoft released its new 3.1 version of Windows. It fixes many of the bugs in 3.0, plus adds some additional functionality. Overall, attendance at Spring Comdex was surprisingly strong, with more than 70,000 visitors. The mood was definitely one of recovery, but most of the interest was in the new Windows World part of the show, which focused exclusively on Windows utilities and applications. The other major development at Comdex was the announcement of a new video compression technology by IBM for multimedia, or what IBM is calling Ultimedia. Looking at the best-selling software titles for the Apple Macintosh last week, Mac Connection reports that Macintax is still number one with Quicken close behind. Most of the other best-selling titles are utilities except for Clarisworks and the new Microsoft Word for the Mac. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Datastorm Technologies, setting the standard in PC communications through the development of award-winning software such as Procom Plus, combining power, ease of use, and affordability to become the best-selling communication software in the world, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail-order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and by Cardinal Technologies, makers of the Snap Plus video adapter, Snap Plus hardware and software turn a PC into a video production workstation. Snap Plus from Cardinal Technologies, made in the USA. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1-800-366-9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes.